everybody. I'm uh, Rebecca Vital from uh, Shankar College uh, of Design and Engineering from Israel. Um, I'm coming from an architectural background. I'm not an archaeologist, uh, so. But I think uh, that uh, what we see here is the same methodology and the same way of thinking, whether the building is 60 years old or uh, 1,000 years old or 2,000 years old. Uh, the project that you will see was done within a framework of a preservation course, and it was done with a group of students. And uh, the question was here, the building that we're talking about was a building under preservation with a question mark with whether it will remain under preservation or not. But it was a cultural heritage site because it was uh, an integral uh, part of the Israeli history. Uh, and the question when we talked with the project architect of the city was what was the best way to document uh, the site. Uh, the building in question is a, a single uh, family residence uh, in the area of uh, Ramat Gan, which is adjacent to Tel Aviv. And the reason this uh, building uh, is an important uh, cultural heritage site, it served as the primary residence and as the headquarters of uh, David Ben Gurion, who was the first. Uh, the first uh, Prime Minister of Israel, and during the War of Independence in 1948, and during the establishment of the State of Israel. It's a, it's a simple, a relatively simple house of 270 square uh, meters, and the house is uh, labeled for preservation. Uh, for somebody who knows Israel a little bit here, you can see the location of the house. Uh, this is the greater Tel Aviv area, and uh, what you see in red is the city of Ramat Gan, which is exactly adjacent to Tel Aviv, and the house is located within Ramat Gan. It's a two-story house. Um, and the reason that I said the building is under preservation with a question mark next to it is because the owners have petitioned the fact that it's under preservation. And the simple reason is that the area, the lot right now, is zoned uh, for a di different capacity. It has the capacity to have 1,400 square meters rather than only uh, 270 square meters. And they can build seven apartments in, uh, instead of this uh, house. So if it will actually, uh, the, the petition of the owners will go through, the building is going to be taken down, which means that um, uh, an interesting part of Israeli, piece of Israeli history is going to be erased with it. So we suggested to the city of Ramat Gan to do the documentation through laser scanning uh, because when, when, we, when we need to document a building of uh, cultural heritage, there is a lot of things that we need to document. It's the three-dimensional geometry, it's the, the material, uh, the orientation, the context of the building, and on top of that is all the historical background that comes with the building that needs to be documented, and we want everything to be in one comprehensive database. So we used uh, a Leica Geosystem uh, C10 scanner to do the documentation, and then later on we did the post-processing of the data uh, in uh, Leica software, which is called Cyclone. Uh, you see the equipment here on uh, the picture. And to record, to scan this building, we had to take uh, 72 lo scanning locations uh, in the interior and the exterior of the house. On the exterior, we scanned in medium resolution and we took photographic imagery. In the interior, we just needed to scan in low resolution, which was accurate enough. 
the reason that we have this many uh, scanning locations is that we didn't have the option to use GPS referencing here, and we didn't have a total station uh, as well to do um, uh, geo uh, topographical surveying of the site. So to connect and register all the scans, we did a, a large amount of scans. And what we received is a point cloud which has all the geometrical information and on top of that we can superimpose all the uh, picture information that we have for the site that the scanner takes. And what you see here is the different views of the cloud point, the, the point cloud. And very fast, once we have this, uh, once we have this objective database, we can do a fly through the cloud point and see the geometry and understand immediately the 3D geometry of the building. Uh, the important uh, thing about this stage of work is that it's an objective database. It's a database that uh, the hand of the architect or the archaeologist or any interpretation, there is, there is no inter interpretation to this database of anybody. So it's completely objective and uh, that's what we call our raw database about the building. And then there are many uh, thesis or hypotheses taken and, and next steps oops, about, uh, about the continuation of this uh, stage of work. And we can go from the cloud point, we can go to two-dimensional drawings, we can go to a three-dimensional model, we can work for preservation, and we can uh, create a virtual reconstruction. Now what you see here is uh, a few forms that the point cloud can take. It can uh, be viewed with an intensity map uh, on top of it, which is uh, a combination of uh, the return of light that the surface gives and the color of the surface itself. It can be viewed as a grayscale or it can be viewed with a photographic imagery superimposed on top, on top of the uh, cloud point which goes and colors each and every single point of these millions of points that we have in the database. And then we took each uh, elevation of the building and we created two-dimensional uh, drawings. This is already a stage in the post-processing that we interfere. The hand of the architect goes and traces over on the top of the point cloud to get out information. We can see here uh, the point cloud uh, superimposed with the two-dimensional drawings and the layering of the point cloud that we took to compile this elevation. We got a better understanding uh, about uh, the built-in elements of the building which uh, in the first view when we walked inside the house we didn't completely understand. And uh, we have a documentation of all the smaller elements that uh, compile this uh, structure. On, on top of that we had photographic documentation of the materials that are on the site. We have a three-dimensional documentation of the interior elements of the house. And we divided it according to the functions of each area. And there are many ways of viewing the information. Here you see, you see an uh, axonometric cut into the point cloud and the 2D drawing superimposed on top of it. Uh, so we got all the elevations and all the sections. Uh, certain elevations had extensive stonework where we were able to document it very accurately uh, and for uh, preservation purposes make an assessment on what's the work that needs to be done. 
Uh, also, the stucco work, work was very damaged in certain areas and we were able to uh, get an immediate assessment of cost uh, and quantity for what it needs to be fixed. But uh, in case uh, the, the owners will get their way and they will turn this uh, building down, uh, we were able to create a three-dimensional uh, three model of the building, which represents the building when it was first built. We can superimpose the, and mix uh, this three-dimensional representation with the point cloud so we can see exactly the differences of the as-builds that we have from the site today and from the reconstructions that try to look at the building when it was first built in 1944. So by creating a, a three-dimensional representation, if this building is going to be torn down, it can still uh, be part of this uh, historical era that this building belongs to, and it can be part of the historical narrative that accompanies the time period and the first prime minister of Israel and it's also a way for the lay person to understand the building, especially in the case that the building does not exist anymore. Uh, you can give this information in a very clear visual way. Uh, this is it. I just want to take advantage and make a small announcement. We, are, uh, we did uh, this year uh, in Israel for the first time a workshop on laser scanning, which takes, it's a four-day workshop that takes the participants through all the steps uh, of the la uh, laser scanning process and the post-processing uh, with the, the software of Cyclone, so people get to, to know the equipment and work with the equipment and then they get to post-process uh, the information to 2D drawings and to 3D meshes. Uh, we did that in the archaeological site of Metzada, which is an archaeological site from the Herodian time period in the desert. Uh, and we will uh, be doing this for the next two years as well. So the next workshop is in next February. If somebody would be interested in something like this, I would be happy to, to put you on our mailing lists. Thank you.